the HD springs and there's different versions of that depending on how you're equipped. Um, for the V6, obviously HD is different because the engine doesn't weigh as much as the Hemi and then there's another one for the diesel. We ended up getting the stiffest springs that ARB offers and that is the um, 3121 uh, fronts. And then we got the 3060 rears. Bought ours through Rocky Road Outfitters. Took them a while to get some of the parts in, so make sure you check with them beforehand if you're on a time crunch. A lot of the stuff they're waiting on is like the Mopar um, parts if you're doing quadra lift. You can also do this yourself uh, if you want to source all the extra pieces you need. There's several places online that tell you what parts to get, but one of the reasons I went with RRO is because these front struts came assembled, so I didn't have to mess with them. These things are pretty stiff and there's a lot of uh, horror stories about people not being able to get them with like the AutoZone spring compressors that you can rent. So you got to take it to a shop and pay them to do it if you don't have somebody else assemble it for you. And I just decided this was the easier way to go. And then these are the front struts. These are for, uh, I want to say 2017 and up. Whenever they changed the sway bar, I don't remember. We have a 2019 Trailhawk Hemi. So like I said, we want the stiffest springs because of all the weight we're going to have. This is the Chrysler 12 plus 8 cable I'm using with Alpha OBD. Back up in here, you can see the connectors, where they came from, and that's where that's going to plug into these two connectors right here. Oops, sorry. It'll plug into these two connectors, and then the other end of this is OBD. So a lot of people go with Bluetooth or wireless. I just went with the OBD, uh, OBD Link SX. It's just a USB one. So that way I can just hook this up, plugs it into the laptop, makes it easy. There it goes, now it's connected. All right, so now you're gonna come over to Active Diagnostic. All right, car configuration change is what we want. So click that, find setting. So this list, we're also going to go all the way to the bottom. PC chassis net, air suspension control module, ASCM, select value, not enabled. All right, then you're going to go back up here and we're going to hit start. Current status is enabled, click next. Current status not enabled, stop. Go back over here. We will disconnect. All right, so now we're disconnected. And now we're gonna go pull fuses. Hang on a second. All right, these are the fuses you wanna pull. This one is K3. This one is F5. By the way, yours will not have blue tape on them. I marked these earlier. Just in case you're looking out for blue painter's tape on the fuse you're supposed to pull. And then this one is F87 right here. Use the proper tool for this one. And then do it like this. I know it's almost Christmas time, but the Jeep decided to light up like a Christmas tree early. So we've got ABS faults. We've got forward collision warning. Parking sensors are all down. So we're gonna try an ABS initialization. All right, we've done all of those. Now we're doing this. So now we're going to disconnect and let's start this thing up. Awesome sauce. Got to give a shout out to a guy named Terry Bollinger on the WK2 Alpha OBD Facebook group because one of his posts is what helped me out with all this stuff. 
All right, so everything looks good. So we're gonna disconnect this whole mess and get on with the hardware swap. All right, here we are in the back. I've got back wheels off, back is on jack stands. All right, following the Rocky Road instructions, they've got you coming back here to the tank. And if you look right there, you can see the valve in the middle. And that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to use to uh, get all the nitrogen out of the tank. The tank is actually the same as an AC fitting. So I'm going to stick that on there and then vent it out through this end. So now this gauge is on there. I'll actually tell you how much pressure is in there too. Right now we are at 60 PSI. And that's with the vehicle in off-road too. Anyway, here goes the nitrogen vent. All right, so I'm at the step in the instructions where we pull the compressor out. <clears throat> now I have the off-road animal predator bumper, so, so we will pull this monster out and that'll free up a bunch of space for whatever I want to put in there. Unscrew all of these, pop all the air lines off, drain the rest of the air out of the system. So we're gonna do that real quick. The one that's hissing right now is the right front. As you can see, it's dropping some. I'm letting it go slow because I've also got, oh, excuse me. Got a jack stand under here. So I want it to come down some because that'll bring the back end up, but I don't want it to come down too, too far. Remove the compressor. We're gonna take off, obviously these two that were right here. You probably still have a crash bar if you have a stock-ish Grand Cherokee, unless you've done like a full bumper replacement like AR. So you take these two off, and then the other one, it is really hard to see back in there, but it is. All right, this one was a pain in the ass to crack loose, but you can see as I'm loosening it up, this whole compressor assembly is just straight wobbly sausage. All right, the compressor's out, and you can see there's like a ton of space in there. Here's the compressor. This is the side you can see. And then this is the bracket. This is where that third bolt was. It was hard to show, but there's a bunch of clips and some zip ties, a bunch of different things you gotta disconnect to get this thing out. So here's all the wires. Need to tape up these harnesses. These are for the compressor. And then that is it. Tape all this, or uh, zip tie all this stuff up out of the way, seal it up, make it watertight, and then we'll be good. I electrical taped all the connections and the hoses and everything just in case I decide to use any of that later. Um, and then I just zip tied it all up out of the way and over to one of these cables over here to hold it back up there. And that way it doesn't bang around and stuff. The plus side of that is if you've got air suspension and you've um, messed with your fender liners at all, you know that those hoses were all right here, like right up against this. And so with my plastic fenders, I couldn't use the heat gun and push that up out of the way very much because those airlines were right there. Now though, I can bend this little part that's dented in right there. I can use my heat gun and smash that whole thing back out to give me more room. Yeah. All right, the airbag, now that you've deflated everything, when you come back here, it's up in there like that. You can just pull it down and you can smash it out. This is 12 millimeter, just like the front. And just unscrew it. If you think you might use them later, be a little more careful than I was. I tweaked the bag a little too hard and actually broke that. So, I mean, it doesn't matter now, but just in case you need to use it for something. So airbag it says remove it now but I don't have room to remove it. So we're gonna wait and do that in another step in a few minutes. Also, it says use a dead blow and smack it under here. It comes right out. It's pretty easy. 
So I've popped the level sensor right there in the middle of the screen. I popped that side off. I took the nut off of the back of the shock. Uh, the bolt's still through there though. And for this step, you put a jack under it before you pull that bolt out. This is a 21 millimeter on this side. And they said the other side is a 23 millimeter. But I ended up just using a crescent wrench. Let's see if I can do this without bumping the camera. BFH for the win. Just need a little tap, tap, tap a -roo. Down here on the sway bar, you've got eight millimeter and eighteen, like it says. And this thing is tight; it's kind of a pain in the ass. But should have probably taken a steel uh, brush and cleaned these threads, or put some uh, duh, what you call it, um, NCCs on them, or something because it was a fight all the way getting the whole nut off. I'll stuck it up here so I don't lose it, but. There we go. Done and done. All right, so we pull this back out. Definitely should have washed that beforehand because that's just ridiculous. This is going to be a 16 millimeter, both sides. They broke loose pretty easily. I don't think I need this anymore. I would highly recommend you guys give your vehicles a good washing before you do this. Get the fender wells and up under whatever you can get because. I had to turn a fan on. I'm dropping all kinds of dust in my eyes. Okay, got the new shock in. This is just sitting there. I don't have anything bolted in on the bottom yet. We've got the, I don't know what they called it, but this behind the brake over here, this one's, the bolt is out, so that's loose. This one is also loose. And there's another one somewhere. The sway bar. What else am I missing? I guess I'm thinking of the shock bolt. So those two and then the sway bar link are loose. Up here, just started threading these. I put some red thread locker on the ends like it suggests. I'm about to tighten those up. And then I've still gotta get this air spring out. So I'm gonna see if I can push down on this enough and get the air spring flat enough that I can get it out of there. So I decided to take the dust boot off of the stock shock and I'm gonna put it on the old man emu. Since it's already put together, I just cut it and it's got a band right here. That just very carefully wrapped electrical tape around it to hold it in place and the zips hide it. It's a little janky, but I mean, they didn't come with boots, so I don't think they need them anyway, according to ARB and Rocky Road. Um, but I could do this and it took me five minutes, so I figured I might as well. So in the instructions, it says that this bolt is optional. We're gonna go ahead and do it because I'm having a tough time getting this down far enough to pop this air spring out. It is an 18 on both sides and I'm just gonna hit it with the impact. And jackpot. Everything you do, you wanna make sure you don't hit this wheel speed sensor wire. So I owe you guys an apology because I totally screwed the pooch. We had such a hard time getting the spring in on the passenger side, the first one we attempted, that I totally spaced on filming it. All the videos make it look really easy. We had a hell of a time getting the spring in on this side. And part of the reason was because I was initially really worried about letting the axle slide out too far. And so the reason I waited until I got the main three bolts out to try to take the spring out is because the air spring a little compressed, but it's a fat son of a bitch. So 
you can't with two hands you can't really compress it enough to get it out and push all of this assembly down so definitely need an extra set of hands once you get to the step where you take these bolts out and this is all a lot looser this part sits like this like it's right sitting right now the rotor in the hub will flop down i mean like way down here it'll make you think it's gonna like just fall out but um that'll give you all the room you need and once it's down there then you can also push down on the whole assembly more and that'll let you get the spring in i have the hd springs the 3060s and they are really tall so with it all the way down we still had to like get some bounce and action going to get it in there and actually get it seated and everything so something to prepare for you're definitely going to want to hand with the springs and again that's that's how big the air spring is it's twice as wide as the regular spring moving to the front we've got it all jacked up this is where we're supporting it with the rails subframe rails it's not technically a jacking spot but it works and it doesn't bend so we're going to use it this is the front air strut assembly this is what we're going to be pulling out and be replacing these control arms also this is the stock setup so all of this stuff is about to come out so we can access everything all right this is the wheel speed sensor we're gonna pull it out and then we're just gonna stick the screw back in there that way not another screw or bolt to keep track of we'll know where it is when we need it and then just secure that up out of the way so it doesn't snag on anything so we're tackling the brake caliper bolts and you can see they're um like a reverse Torx, I guess. I don't know what you actually call that. The Torx, I think is what they're the, called. The uh, 16 millimeter though, we have a 12 point 16 millimeter socket and that works just fine. So something to think about if you guys have that, that'll take these off, save you a headache later. Or, sorry, when you get the caliper off, we hung ours right here. The uh, next step is pulling the rotor off. In theory, it's not that hard, but this little rubber ring has a groove that it sits in. And so once you get it started, it'll come right off. But getting it started can be a pain in the ass. But don't damage this because this helps hold your rotor on. And then our front rotors came right off. If you are All right, we're removing the ride height sensor. And it says to remove it from the bottom, but we chose to remove it from the top because we also are upgrading the control arms with the uh, Rocky Road uppers. So seems like it'd be better to pull it off at the top so you don't have to do it twice. All right. This is a 21 millimeter on the upper ball joint. You're gonna to want to break the bar. Not enough room to fit an impact unless you're gonna do U joint or something on your impact. But all right, on this ball joint, we've got this loose. It's a six millimeter hex, six millimeter Allen wrench in the middle. Use that to hold it still. On ours, we didn't have to use a um, ball joint tool to knock it down. It was already loose, so we're in good shape there. And now we're gonna move on to the sway bar, removing it from the strut, since the strut's gonna come out. So we did the sway bar. It was actually 18 on this side, and the back side of the strut was a 21. Um, those were a pain in the ass to get off. They're nice and dirty and mud crusted. The tie rod is gonna be a 21. All right, the top is a 10. It's easier with two sets of hands, but you could also do this on your own. All right, we're going to talk doing the bolts for the clevis mount for the strut. And the Rocky Road instructions are incorrect. This is a 27 on both sides. We'll see how far the impact goes because I've only got one 27 socket. So it'll kick. <laughs> impact for the win. <laughs> All right, we're on the hub, and this is indeed a 31. I had to buy this socket because I also didn't have a 31. So here we go for this one. I'm going to set this down so I don't break my wrist with this thing. Is, and now we're going to drop this upper one. I think I like the finger on this now. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's got it. Okay. Okay, there it is. Light out now. Light out now. Oops. There it goes. All right. So, pulling the axle out of the knuckle. 
needs to stay with this just make sure you guys don't lose that either that or you're gonna have to go find a new one and replace it we ended up turning the steering knuckle back so like you're turning to the passenger side and that got the axle out more easily than we could have gotten it out on the other way so this one's 12 millimeter just like all the others comes right out I actually didn't have any air come out of this bag and then the three strut mounts are all gonna be 13 millimeter they're supposed to be, but I would imagine that's correct. We're at the stage where we're going to pull the front axle out on the passenger side. This is where it connects to the front diff. You can see it comes around over here. This is your oh, way too close. Zoom out. This is the front diff. The housing extends this way, and this is where the CV joint actually connects right here. So we're going to pop that out. Um, for reference, if you need to find where you are under the vehicle, this is right next to the sign on the bottom of the oil pan that says, do not keep a well manicured lawn on top of your engine. So make sure you find that and then you know you're in the right spot. Oh, not a lot of room under here, so hopefully I don't knock the crap out of the camera. All right, I marked this just like I do with a drive shaft. I don't think it really matters based on what I've seen, but it can't hurt to put it back in the same way, you know? So, get you a pry bar or something. If there's a seal up here, so I wouldn't recommend using a sharp edge unless you're really, really careful. Um, so that's why I'm using the screwdriver instead of like a pry bar you use on like a crate or boards or something. Get you something that doesn't have a sharp edge and just pop it in there. There it goes. Now, if you go look, you can see that the axle's actually popped out right there. So, pull on it. So, you can see now the axle's coming out. Since we've got the axle loosened up in there, come back out here and now we should be able to pull it out there it goes I didn't drain the front diff before doing this I don't think you need to but we're gonna find out pretty quick so we will know before too long All right, looks like that was the right call. You can see in there, see if I can get some more light in there. That's the axle pulling out. Be careful, you don't wanna bang it up. I mean, they're pretty tough, but you don't wanna catch the boot on anything. You don't wanna damage anything from being careless. So just pay attention, take it slow. Strut, you can see there's a whole lot more clearance now. I've got one nut up there hanging on. So it's time to go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna tackle this control arm. This is a comparison of the two struts. Completely stock, quadra lift, front driver, or sorry, front passenger strut on your right.
We're gonna do the upper control arm on the passenger side. So you gotta pull out the fuse box. I went ahead and pulled the fender liner because I was thinking it's gotta be an easier way to get to it from down here. Sure enough, there's another bolt right here. But something else I realized is the bolt for the control arm that I'm trying to get to is this one right here. You just barely see the end of it poking out. And so I'm just gonna go after it from down here because that's way easier than taking that whole damn box out and then mess with all that stuff because all those cables run through it or around it. So we're gonna go this route instead. So this is, in my opinion, the easier way to go. And when I say easier, I don't mean it's easy. I just mean it's easier than pulling out this whole box where the fuse uh, fuses are and your PCM and everything. Plus all the wiring and all the other shit you gotta move just to get to it. Um, I'm getting this like one click at a time. But it's going. All right, so. The other side is not supremely difficult to get to. I mean, you can see the end of the screwdriver. It is right back here. Basically, between the shock tower and the firewall, about 8 or 10 inches down. I had a box end wrench. It was 12 point. That's a little bit longer than this. I was able to break it loose with that. So now I'm using an 18 ratcheting box end on it. There's not a lot of room between the bolt because the end sticks out through that nut and it's got a point on it so you can't put a very deep socket on it so you go in there with a shallow socket you're not going to be able to get it on it because of the bolt and the way it sticks through there so you definitely need to hold the bolt on the other side just to keep it from rotating back and forth because it's got maybe almost 90 degrees of play so you're using a ratcheting wrench and you're taking away a lot of what you can actually do if that damn wrench can't move. All right, so these bolts will pull out now. This bolt will pull out. It's not a good way to do it without getting my hand in the way, so sorry. As I mentioned before, I've got the shock tower at the top. It's, the nuts are all three still on there, but I loosened them up considerably. And I'm at the step when installing this that I have not put the bottom in yet. So this thing has a lot of play and you need that to get these bolts out without too much effort. So if you're doing the control arms, when you're doing the suspension install, I would do them first step after you put the strut back in and put the three nuts on the top. That's now we've got both of these bolts out and that mamma jamma comes right out. This is the OEM front control arm. Here is your Rocky Road control arm. So you can see the angle's different. It's made out of much beefier material. On it. Easily replaceable ball joint. So you don't have to do this ever again, assuming these bushings last. And then the other thing is, this one is just stamped. So, I mean, this is plenty strong, it's stock but it's got non-serviceable ball joints. So you replace this, you're gonna be replacing it again, more than likely, just depending on how long you actually keep your Grand Cherokee. So something to think about, it's a lot of work up front. If you're doing the suspension, I would just do it because it's gonna be your best shot. Did you do trail on it? Yeah, so the axle on this side was harder to get off. So I pulled the knuckle forward like this and then hit that since there was some slack behind it and it popped right through. So you guys try that if it doesn't come off really easily. There we go. Remember? Oh, you got that on there. Yep. Uh, not get all the way out. Hang on. Yeah, well, yes, we did. That's still getting resistance. A little bit. We had to like really push down on this. It's not coming out of here though. It's still stuck a really? little bit. Really? Yeah. Hold on. I thought we were going to have to put a bunch of grease on that. Yes. Now it's out. Okay. It got a sound as long as we're going. <clears throat> oh, God bless America. I don't want to smash this washer. Okay. Almost. God. Come on. Oh, there it goes. 
Holy crap. That's why you need four hands. There it is. Okay. Alright. So it's not really as difficult as I just made it look, but it's not easy because there's not much access. So take that for what it's worth. Oh shit, I didn't mark this. What are you gonna mark? Just marking the axle so I know. When I'm trying to put it back in, I can see where I... Is it keyed? It only goes in one way? No, it's not, but... What I did seemed to work pretty well, so I just didn't want to mess with the juju. Yeah. So you're pulling the axle completely out, or does yep. it just stay right there? Nope, it's going to come completely out. No. <laughs> but just hang out moment. until they yell for an extra set of hands, because when they need them. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give me a little bit more room. All right. So much more room with the cover off. Okay. All set? Yeah, that is ready to go in. Grease both sides of the control arm. That side is in. That side is in. I'm good to go. All right. When they're not cranked all the way down. So we accidentally tightened the bolts on the upper control arm before. By, she, by we, she means me. <laughs> before the bottom, the weight of the vehicle was on it. So we're undoing that right now before we install the front. Do you need me to help? Well, you hold the control arm up. The thing is a pain in my ass. There you go. Just like three threads on should be enough. Just so there's... We got them all on. Okay. Somebody hand me the BFH. It's on. So how did you know? Talk to the camera. Because I pushed real fucking hard and it went in. What did you feel? <laughs> like how did you know it went in? <laughs> you can see it slide in. So when you when you start to go, it'll slide in a little bit when the splines match up. And then it'll stop because there's a dog ring at the end of it. It's like a snap ring that holds it in place. And so it catches on that. Once you get it past that, then it'll go in all the way. Okay, thank you. What do you need? Grease. He needs the platter of grease. That tube is fine. It doesn't have to be the platter. <laughs> have to make sure to add the commentary why we taped that washer on. Oh, good call. What is it? Is it something I can get right now? Thank you. Yeah, it's because we didn't want it to fall off and we forget about it and put everything back together and then realize we have to take the whole suspension apart. So you taped it where? This, this washer this right washer, here. This washer, we taped it to the axle. They're very explicit in the instructions that yeah. you do not want to install this without that on there. Yeah, gotcha. So it wouldn't fall off and we wouldn't, you know, without noticing it. <laughs>
washer is still in place, right? I'm holding it. Okay. All right, so push that up towards me now. Push that in. There we go. That's, that's, how, that's how it should go. So their their control through. arms come with a rubber boot and then a poly boot, and then it's got this machine washer to make it all fit together properly. There you go, Randy. Next up for you. <laughs> driving this off the lot before we signed the papers he promised me it had everything, everything it wanted. needed there was no upgrades needed no at that time that was 100 true no modifications were required i even made him get the higher model than he wanted because i wanted to make sure we didn't have to do stuff well, everything that was available at the time he got he got every option, yes. Available at the time. Yes, that, well, that's it, accurate. It had every stock option he needed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it had the airlift, right? So he wasn't ever going to need a lift. <laughs> I didn't know it was so damn unreliable and was going to shit the bed on us. The, the lower front fascia came off, so he didn't need a bumper. A I don't think a winch had ever crossed his mind. Nope. I got a nut to something. Um... <laughs> Is that off the Is original it... ball joint? Oh yeah, that's pro probably it.